Hello, my name is Oksong, the soul singer, and you are watching the Indie Blogs, where I take you on my trials, my tribulations, my motivations, and my inspirations. Did you hear that dog? Did you hear that dog? Birds are so lovely. The birds are so lovely. Today, we are going to cover part two of that interview that I had with Derek Lindsay. Um, he's that producer in Atlanta that you know you saw a while back uh, in another video. If you haven't seen the video yet, it will be up here, I believe. I had a lot of questions to ask him. How do you avoid the casting couch? Or how do you split up? who did what, the rights, the credits, etc, etc. I have even more questions I would like to ask, but of course, I'm trying to limit it because his time is limited and I appreciate it. So thank you very much, Derek, for your time. Hopefully, um, a question you might have gets answered in this video and I will see you shortly after the video. Bye now. Hi, Derek. Hello. Um, thank you so much for doing this for me. Um, and you know, this is for the Indie Blogs. Give us a little 30 second introduction to who you are. Uh, my name is Derek Lindsay. I am a producer and engineer and musician for Derek Lindsay Music, LLC. I think when it gets to a certain level, because I'm dealing with industry projects and not deal, I work in education as well. Between the two, it's like, yeah, you know, you're structuring yourself a little bit different. You're not just a freelancer anymore. You know, I'm a vendor for Atlanta. So I can, work, I can work in all the schools going there and I'm on their register. And how do you work splits today when selling a song is disappearing? It's, it's oh, just a, it's a question because iTunes one. is gone and now streaming is here. So what do you do in these? Because the music business is kind of changing, t in my opinion. Yes. More like a, like a, a utility, like like a, like water or and electricity. I'm gonna say something on that. Um, I was in engineering school almost ten years ago to this day, and one of our instructors, I I swear to you, he he sat out in front. This is like 2009, 2010. Mm -hmm. He sat in front of the whole class. And he put up an article saying, music as water. I read that book. <laughs> and you read that? And we were sitting there like, he's like, yeah, the same way water comes out of your faucet, you pay a certain amount of money per month, the water company is going to continue to let you run your water. No matter how where the water is coming from, you're going to get the water. And now that's where we're at. That's where we're at. We went from $15 CDs, where you can easily split from a physical copy to now, we don't know really what to do. So what I advise is just to get the rights. Um, do a split sheet. Uh, when you do copyright, every, make sure y'all register uh, with your PRO. Make sure y'all sort that stuff out. That's hey, your best Derek. Defense. Yes. What's a split sheet? A split sheet is nothing more than a formal agreement between all parties who are creating music. And it lets everybody know who's involved with it, what the address is, home, blood type, social security. But, <laughs> it's usually but it's, on one page. It's usually well. on one page. Okay. Yeah, it's just a one page agreement. Um, it just lets everybody know who knows who's on the ball project. And that way you ain't got to deal with any other. You still got to deal with something else. But it's, it, it, it's a peace of mind it more, more than anything. It's a great peace of mind. All right, I have a serious question. Shoot. This question is for all my women out there. Right. I say women, but there has been uh, a few males who have uh, experienced the casting couch as well. Um, what advice would you give to an independent artist who is unsigned, who is going through the motions, meeting producers, male, uh, or you know, quote unquote gatekeepers? How do you get business done without with avoiding the casting couch? Um. Well, for women. You gotta treat it like a treat it like you're shopping for a car. I'm, I'm gonna put it like this: If you go shopping for a car, you know in most cases 
they're gonna treat some men, they're gonna treat male customers a little different than women customers because they're used to men mainly purchasing cars and knowing about the details of a car more than women. But they're great women mechanics and know, you know, at the same time. You treat it like a car dealership. You wouldn't go in there by yourself because you know as soon as you walk on the lot, there's about 10 salesmen that are gonna come at you, you know. Um, if you're dressed like you're going to the club to go buy a car, the approach is going to be different. You know, it's going to be a lot different. Um, so if they're trying to ask you for a date by the end of that because you're putting off that, you know, energy or whatever you dressed at, it's going to be human nature to some of that. So to minimize a lot of that stuff, just, you know, go in there and be conservative. Um, and then bring people with you. Bring another person with you um, that's more knowledgeable. Ask a lot of questions. Um, if you can do something that's more in a public setting from junk, uh, do so. Yeah, yeah, which is my question. You know, I thought I would be meeting you at your house today. Uh, no, we're ground zero. We <laughs> we at the shop, <laughs> so we we at the shop. Um, but there's a lot more people with home studios today now. So uh, some people don't have the luxury, you know, to go rent out a studio just to do a meet and greet with people. But if you do have to go to somebody's house, if, they, if that's where the home studio is, um, just be mindful of the hours. If you can do something more in the daytime, you know, try to do it more in the daytime than, than versus, you know, midnight, 1, 1 a.m. after leaving the club or something like that. Um, not saying all people are bad, you know, but, you know, increase your chances of comfort. Your top three tips for singers and rappers, if anything, for anything? Uh, tips for singers is uh, invest in some form of lessons for yourself. Uh, understand by vocal lessons, vocal production, because that's the stuff that really makes or break you when you're actually making records and stuff. So they should learn about production then? They should learn about production, um, oh yeah. You know, I don't know any carpenter that hasn't studied a hammer. You know, they don't, they, they understand the hammer, that's a big big part of what they use. But they understand what different types of nails. They understand screws and screwdrivers and all the other essential things for them to build and do what they do. So don't just limit yourself to the hammer because you need something else. The hammer needs, needs to do something to something. So um, rappers, diversify. Um, listen to a lot of older music, stuff that's going to give you a different cadence. Everybody's always looking for a way to spit and have a different cadence. Listen to older stuff. Listen to stuff you wouldn't normally listen to. And listen to the cadence, listen to the melodies, listen to the rhythms. And try to rap to something that you wouldn't have no business rapping to. Take a country song, just by yourself, and see if you can spit something on it and make it hot. Well, what do you think about singers who, who go between a lot of styles? Is it hurt? Is it good? Is it bad? Um, it's not bad unless it's not, it, if it's natural for you to go between different styles, that's fine. Um, Prince wasn't stuck to one style, mm -hmm. you know, Stevie, Michael, uh, their influence, they had a lot of stuff that influences the music. Uh, my thing is just to make it if you feel it. But trying to create a hit and all that stuff, um, hits are not always about songs, which is funny. The marketing team and the public to find the hit. You just make sure the song is good. Your job is to make sure that song is as good as you can make it and you left nothing out there. And then you let everybody else determine, um, you know, the destiny of this song. Oh, wait, Derek. Yes. You have a podcast. I have a podcast. Tell them about the podcast. Yes, so I got this podcast where I'm just dropping stuff. It's just uh, little tidbits of money. Little tidbits, man. Just just some stuff you can you can put in your pocket and pull out when you need it. And might might serve you some good one day. Um, so my podcast is called My Cousin Makes Beats, right? And it's available on, on the Anchor platform. And if you do reach out to me through any of those platforms, I'd be more than happy to send you the link uh, to the podcast. So once again, if you're on Anchor.com, type in My Cousin Makes Beats. M Y C U Z Z I N. Make sure I can, I can spell makes right. Yeah. M A K E S. Beats. Hooked on phonics works for me, y'all.
I don't want to break nothing. You need some room. No, I got it. All right, cool. All right good people. We just talked to Derek Lindsay. I thank him so much. That's me. Uh, that's him. <laughs> um, he's in Atlanta, but just because he's in Atlanta doesn't mean he can't make a song for you. All you got to do is email. Awesome. So if y'all need to get contact with me, um, you can email me at dlnzproductions at gmail.com. Um, my Instagram handle is DLNZ Music. Facebook, Derek Lindsay. D E R E K L I N Z Y. And the same goes for YouTube. So those are the best ways to hit me. And you can also go to the official website at DerekLindsay.com. Oh, wait, Derek. Yes. You have a podcast. I have a podcast. Tell them about the podcast. Yes. So I got this podcast where. I'm just dropping stuff, man. It's just uh, little it's tidbits of little knowledge. tidbits, man. Just just some stuff you can you can put in your pocket and pull out when you need it. And might might serve you some good one day. Um, so my podcast is called My Cousin Makes Beats, right? And it's available on, on the Anchor platform. And if you do reach out to me through any of those platforms, I'd be more than happy to send you the link uh, to the podcast. So once again, if you're on Anchor.com, type in. My cousin makes beats. M Y C U Z Z I N. Make sure I got I can spell makes right. Yeah. M A K E S beats. Hooked on phonics works for me, y'all. All man, right. Go, man. Thank you. Welcome. Bye. Right. I hope you enjoyed that video, part two. I hope you enjoyed part two of the interview with Derek Lindsay. If you found value in that, yay. Um, share it with a friend who might be an independent artist who could use his help. Like it. If you don't like it, don't like it. Um, if you want to connect with me on Instagram, I am on I am at I am Oak Song. If you want to find me on Facebook, I am at Oak Song, the Soul Singer. And if you want to find me on YouTube, well, you're halfway there. You're here now. Just hit that subscribe bell button, and then hit the bell. Right next to that subscribe button, when you hit it, there's a bell. There's three bells. You hit the button, the bell on top. Does that make any sense? When you hit the subscribe button, you hit the bell button on top, the third one. And that will let you know whenever I have a new video upload. Anyway, thank you so much for visiting this time, and I will see you next time. I hope you guys are having a lovely week, month, day, hour, minute, second, moment. Every moment is fleeting, so please cherish them and your loved ones. Take care, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.